Hi. You know, in all my books about programming, I use the PIC microcontroller. It's my favorite microcontroller to use. And I use a hardware programmer because it gives you a lot of options. Like, you can debug. You can program any part. You don't have to worry about bootloader or something like that. But there's a lot of questions about which one to use. And one of the most popular items on my website is my own PIC Kit 2 programmer. And I'll, I'll get into that. But I want to show you how far this has come and give you a brief history of the PIC programmer. The first one is the PIC Start 16B1. This is where it all started for me. Back then there were only five PIC microcontrollers. Now there's thousands. This was a board officially released by Microchip. It was about $180. It had a socket for plugging the chip in. You connected to your computer through a serial port and you had to apply 9 volt power. This was amazing because at the time hardware programmers were you know, in the thousands of dollars. So to get something for $180 was phenomenal. Now, in that era, we didn't have flash devices. We had to use windowed devices, had a little glass window. And to erase the part, you had to put it in one of these. A ultraviolet eraser. It's got an ultraviolet light. You put the chip in, erase it. 15 minutes later, it's ready to, do, ready to use again. So you'd have a string of those that you would rotate. Now, after the 16B1 came the PicStart Plus. This again was officially from Microchip. Came with a ZIF socket connected to the serial port and 9 volt power. It just, it was a nice package. This sold for $199.95 and it was a top seller. Everybody had one of these. And it, to this day, you know what, you can still buy this from Microchip. The next one was the David Tate style programmer. Now this one is actually from Microengineering Labs, but David Tate was a professor who actually designed his own programmer, open sourced it, and based it on the parallel port. Now instead of 9 volts, you had to supply like 16 to 18 volts to produce the high voltage the programmer needed. But this was outstanding and these popped up everywhere because it was open source this was the programmer to buy this one was around fifty nine dollars but you could build your own for in a range of about twenty five thirty dollars the next one is the JDM programmer now this was an amazing design it was powered off the serial port but you didn't need an external power supply it generated the high voltage through the serial port and it used, a, used very common components, a couple transistors, like six diodes, two capacitors, and a couple resistors. This thing was amazing because you could program all the parts and it was cheap, open source, so you could build your own. The software was a free download. And there was more than one source for the software. People would come up with their own versions. In fact, you can still buy these on eBay. You can still build one. You can still get the software. So this is not a bad programmer. It's not as good for in-circuit programming and you can't do debugging with it, but it's a decent programmer. And, and I actually designed one of these back in 2005. So it was, it was a fun, fun programming. But it all changed. All this changed when Microchip released the Picket 2. The Picket 2 was a USB version of their programmer. It powered off a USB, it generated the voltage you needed from USB, you didn't need so you didn't need an external power supply. It had fantastic features, it was incredibly reliable, and it was getting harder and harder to find a serial port. Now a serial port programmers, a lot of times like the JDM didn't work on a laptop. You needed a desktop. And laptops were getting more popular when this came out. So this was the programmer to have. You can still buy these. I still recommend you have one because of the features. In fact, I went so far as, because it, it's an open source design, I designed my own. And there's many other people who have designed their own. So you can get all kinds of Picket 2 programmers. That is probably the most popular page on my website is information about the Picket 2. Now the final one is the official officially released Picket 3 programmer. This is the one to have if you want to use the latest devices. It works with MPLAB-X, the IDE for all the PICs. 
it supports all the latest devices and it's actually faster at programming than the Picca 2 or any of them so this is the latest and greatest to have in your uh, toolbox so if you like this video please subscribe that way I know you're watching and check out some of my other videos see if you like those too thanks for watching